ladies and gentlemen digital investors welcome back to another video on this one we have an array of different stuff to go over so i hope you guys do enjoy it make sure you tap that like button if you're a frequent viewer of the show and you want to show some support tapping the like helps out a ton with the youtube algorithm picking this up and showing it to more people and with that said I want to push through this. So we're going to start off with Forbes, their crypto awards of 2020, the Forbes cryptocurrency awards, the $3 trillion Bitcoin marketing campaign. So this is kind of a joke. At least I'm hoping that everybody here is interpreting it as a joke. And this goes over a couple of different awards that Forbes is giving out. And one of them is the Forbes person of the year in crypto award, Jerome Powell, a surprise, surprise in an attempt to prevent the U S economy from collapsing under pandemic pressure. Powell, had the U.S. Federal Reserve buy up a record amount of treasuries, effectively printing more than $3 trillion in new money and nearly doubling the central bank's balance sheet. What a hero. Pantera Capital called the infusions two centuries of debt in one month, creating an environment in which previously skeptical investors, including Wall Street whales like Paul Tudor Jones and Stanley Drunkenmiller, started talking cryptocurrency seriously. They said, I think Jerome Paul did the things that he and his colleagues believed were the best things to do in the short term to mitigate pain from the pandemic and economic crisis says Pompliano and I, I you know I'd have to agree and I think that's one of the biggest problems that we have is that the Fed and when it comes to money printing we are so fast to just ignore the core of the problem and print up more money to solve short-term problems never realizing why more and more problems keep arising because we keep sticking on a band-aid over a gushing wound, right? You can't put a band-aid on something that needs a tourniquet. And we need a tourniquet on the Fed and what they're doing with money printing, right? We need to stop this. Um, but, it, you know, we just keep putting band-aids on it. And, and we wonder why we're in the same rut. So they say, but in the pursuit of mitigating short-term pain, they were highlighting for everyone, from retail investors to the largest institutions in the world, what was going to happen over the next decade or two. And you know what, guys? As much as of a joke that this is, it's almost kind of for real, right? Like if you really wanted to say, you know, who made people, institutions, smart money, open their eyes and realize, oh, oh, this is why I need Bitcoin. Look at how the Fed has doubled its balance sheet. Look at the amount of unprecedented money printing. That is the true realization, right? And you realize, okay, I could hold these U.S. dollars that are printed uh, into oblivion, right? My buying power is going, inflation is going, or there is only 21 million Bitcoin and that's it. And I can hold this and other people buy into this and it can go up, right? So in all actuality, Jerome Paul really did. I think he awo awoken a lot of people and mainly I think it was smart money who is now you have smart money, big pockets, institutional investors who are running in, right? You have someone like Michael Saylor and it's like, man, like, does this guy have institutional FOMO or what? And people are following in behind him. He's making a lot of noise, talking to Elon, things like that. And uh, it's drawing attention. That is the main thing here is that this entire thing that we call the cryptocurrency space has a lot of attention on it right now with that said i want to get into this some of the ripple stuff as we guys know there's a ripple lawsuit so this from bitcoin.com ripple lawsuit could invoke billions in losses to innocent third parties says former sec commissioner and i was about to you know start reading through this and seeing what they say and i did but i, I want to show you guys a, a, a main part here right because most people they go out there they read headlines and maybe they read a couple sentences after the headline so if you if you did that with this right let's start here the crypto community is extremely curious about what will happen to ripple Labs and the token XRP after the SEC recently filed a lawsuit against Ripple and two executives. On December 25th, the large cryptocurrency exchange Bitstamp announced delisting XRP for U.S. customers. And a former SEC commissioner thinks the lawsuit will invoke multi-billion dollar losses to innocent third parties. Now, if you guys haven't realized, um, there has just been a massive fear campaign that is going on. And yes, I understand that Ripple is being, uh, you know, has a lawsuit filed against them by the SEC but i also have seen that the big players in this game right let's call it the the media outlets in this game right bitcoin news sites right the very popular ones that tend to focus on mainly bitcoin maybe run by bitcoin maximus we could say 
have been the, you know, just an immense amount of fear pumping out of them, right? And this is this is one of the things that I mean, because we can see here they're saying um, the large cryptocurrency exchange Bitstamp announced delisting XRP for U.S. customers. But I thought to myself, I'm like, wait, that's that's not right, though. I already read that article and I'm pretty sure they didn't delist. So I, I went back to check. So I was like, wait, they're, they're delisting XRP. I thought they were halting the trading of XRP. And then come to find out, I go back, double check, make sure I'm not crazy. Bitstamp to halt U.S. trading of Ripple's XRP in response to SEC lawsuit. Okay, that's that's what I thought I had heard. So you're seeing a fear campaign play out right now, right? There's a reason why they use the word delisting XRP rather than using the real word of Bitstamp is just halting the trading of XRP, halting incoming deposits. And it's because one is much more scary. One brings out an emotional response out of you and a, an emotional response leads to bad decisions, right? Selling a bottom, uh, buying a top, things like that. And they understand how this works. So again, just, just my observation, but my observation is that I think people are really blowing this event completely out of proportion, just completely out of proportion. This Ripple SEC lawsuit has been blown up into like the boogeyman, it seems. And, you know, I understand, I understand why. I think there's a lot of new investors who have gotten into the space, right? New people who are new to crypto and they don't understand Ripple and XRP. And so they're selling. I get that. But I've also seen people who, you know, who have claimed to have done their research. They know exactly what it is that they are holding. They know the problem it is that XRP is solving. They know the partnerships that Ripple has. They know everything like that, right? But they are selling. They're selling their backs. They're saying, no, I've been here from since 2017. This is not weak hands i do not have weak hands but i'm not going to sit through a lawsuit like this and that's you know i more power to you again it's it's your money and you you should do what you feel is best and to be quite honest with you i don't blame you if you sell xrp i don't blame you because a wrench has just been thrown into our system um but one thing you know i know a lot of people right now they're very scared about the whole coinbase thing right well what if coinbase delists xrp or you know even besides that what if coinbase halts the trading of xrp what if they halt incoming deposits and in a lot of people are very bearish because of this. They think the XRP price would tank to, you know, uh, to zero, right? That's the thing is that XRP is going to zero. This is the end of XRP. This is the rug pull. It's going to zero. That's what you hear. But I would just, you know, I remember when XRP pumped. And as far as I was concerned, there was no XRP on Coinbase, right? When XRP made its all-time high, when it went up to $3 and whatever some odd sense, depending on the exchange that, that you were buying from, there, Coinbase did not list XRP. So XRP still got to a price of over $3 without the help of Coinbase. So it's for Coinbase delisting, you know, the other thing too is that many people aren't just on Coinbase anymore. Coinbase has proven their reputation so much and so consistently consistently with how they go down whether crypto is pumping or crypto is dumping coinbase always seems to be shutting down that many people have learned their lessons and they have diversified the exchanges that they are on most people there are a lot of people right i don't know most i don't have the actual data and you know a pie chart in front of me but a lot of people that i know who after you be after you've been on coinbase for a while you've experienced two to three coinbase outages you usually diversify yourself and get on another exchange so just because coinbase delists you know again most people are either going to have another backup exchange where they could trade their xrp or as well a lot of people have either paper wallets ledgers treasures cold wallets hot wallets so it's really not that big of a deal and if coinbase took the bitstamp response keep in mind the only thing bitstamp is doing is they're just halting the trading and no incoming deposits right so it's not like your xrp is going to disappear right and i don't think a, a company can't really do that especially a company like coinbase who's also trying to ipo you know, I don't think they're just going to exit scam with your XRP. <laughs> that just doesn't make any type of sense. Um, so that's just my thoughts on it, right? That's my thoughts on the whole Coinbase thing. Keep in mind, XRP went to $3 without Coinbase. So again, I think this is all just being blown way out of proportion. And uh, there's a popular analyst on Twitter, at Credible Crypto. This is at Credible Crypto on Twitter. And he point, put it put this out, and I, I really liked it. So he says, you don't make high time frame decisions based on low time frame price action. We went from 21 cents to 26 cents in under an hour. We have four days until the weekly close. That's four days to get back above 30 cents. The green level is a weekly level. It's not lost until we close below it on the weekly. And this is this chart right here. So basically what he's saying, guys, is this weekly 
candlestick, which this is the candlestick. This weekly candlestick, believe it or not, is actually closing today. The most bullish thing that we could see for XRP, or not the most bullish thing, but one thing that we would like to see is XRP close, at least in this green, mainly above the 30 cent level, right? That would show that long term, nothing much has really changed, right? If we never even had this pump, we are still on track, right? Everything is still lining up perfectly we're not at you know new lower lows we're not at three cents or anything like that so we still have to see how this thing is playing out right we we don't know the xrp is going to zero yet and that's the problem is a lot of people are just jumping the gun here he also puts out this he says my expectations in the short term lose blue and we go for the range lows blue the bottom of this blue is 26 cents so if we lose 26 cents he's saying we could potentially come down to the 21 cent level what we'd really like to do is pierce above this 30 cent level close above that right especially if we can close that weekly above it and then we could flip that and and it would show that there is some life back in xrp right it would show that a reversal could be possible and that's what we're looking for we're looking for indicators of a possible possible reversal in the price action of xrp and he says to be clear i'm not saying that my expectation is that we will lose blue my expectation is that we will follow the arrows on my chart right so again hit the blue confirm his support go up that's the arrows on his chart that's his expectation but if we lose blue so if we start getting closes underneath this Instead, then I was wrong, and we will likely see the range lows. Those range lows, as per him, is sitting right here. He, he has the uh, line at 21.63, 21 cents. So pretty good analysis from at Credible Crypto on Twitter. Make sure you guys check him out. If you guys are wondering what the rich list is doing, here we have all of retail from 0.1% to 10%, basically the same, right? All selling, some, some of it flattening out. And interesting stuff on the 0.01% that has jumped up. So we had this straight line going across. They weren't doing nothing, right? Not buying, not selling. Now we're seeing that they have jumped up. So maybe that's a buying indicator. Wallets are increasing in amounts of XRP. I know a lot of you guys say, oh, that doesn't mean anything. It's just the exchanges. It, you know, it's just the exchange holdings. And yeah, there's definitely the, the biggest addresses are definitely exchanges. However, I don't think they're all exchanges in that tier. And I may be wrong. I may be wrong. If I am wrong, I'm open to being wrong. That is fine. Um, but I don't think it would be only exchanges in that tier. The other thing as well, guys, you have to think, you know, who controls the exchanges, who owns the exchanges. And if anybody is in the know more than retail, would it not be exchanges, right? So I think exchanges are not every single exchange, right? But there are definitely exchanges that are in on the game, if you know what I mean. We also have this tether regulation proposal could be apocalyptic for crypto. So as we know right now, all the attention is on uh, Ripple and XRP and the SEC coming after them. But there are also other things going on in the crypto space that we need to keep our eye on other than just the massive fear campaign that's going on right now. A new U.S. bill called the Stable Act is stirring anxiety in crypto circles. The act calls for banking licenses for stablecoin issuers such as Tether. The bill proposes additional requirements for Federal Reserve reporting. It also proposes issuance approval in addition to ongoing auditing requirements and an insurance policy to cover assets. Dragonfly Research offers a deep dive into current stablecoin usage. It concludes, should the bill be passed, it could spell the end of Tether. They say, make no mistake, the day that Tether gets taken down will be apocalyptic. Tether is by far the largest and most used stablecoin. Its supply increased 410% this year from a 4.1 billion market cap in early January to 20.9 billion today, according to the Tether Transparency Report. So think about that, guys. 4.1 in early January to 20.9 billion today, according to the Tether Transparency Report. You know, where does all this Tether come from? So Tether, or the crypto dollar, as the researcher labels it, revolutionized the industry over the past couple of years. It opened huge trading gateways with massive liquidity that were impossible by using fiat. It also helped power the rise of DeFi and Ether. However, Multiple U.S. agencies and prosecutors are investigating Tether. The company has so far produced very little. It has produced very little in the way of defense or audits. Tether cannot sustain its monumental growth. It is unsustainable. The research added, Crypto markets will seize. Exchanges will be thrown into disarray. Millions of crypto traders will likely have their assets frozen. And prices everywhere will plummet. A recent presidential working group statement bodes poorly for this crypto segment. This statement suggests that all stablecoin holders should be subject to KYC requirements, which indicates that stablecoins are still in the line of fire. Tether may not be the future of the digital dollar. 
First, a regulated stablecoin that becomes the de facto standard is likely a replacement. Then, inevitably, there will be more controls and identity checks from governments, banks, and tax authorities. If that is the case, the freedoms we have today with digital money movement could be a thing of the past. So with multiple US agencies investigating Tether, right, looking more into it, we're seeing Tether expand the amount of Tether that is out there. And where is that Tether moving into? It's moving into the cryptocurrency market. How? How is that Tether coming about? Is it really back to one to one with the US dollar? Where are these dollars, right? These are all questions. And this is why Tether is coming out under a lot of scrutiny. Um, but we just don't hear much about it, right? That's the one thing that I've that I'm realizing is that we're not hearing very much about Tether, but we're hearing a lot about Ripple and XRP. Um, and I think it's just important that we go over everything that is happening in the space, good or bad. Um, I I covered the Ripple being sued by the SEC news as soon as I saw it, as soon as I could do a video on it, I did it. And that is what I'll continue to do, whether there is good news or bad news coming out in the crypto market, I'm going to cover it. I don't care if it's on something I own and hold. Um, I don't care if it's on something I don't own and hold. If there's bad news about Ripple and XRP, I'm going to put it out. If there's bad news about Bitcoin or Tether or anything else, I'm going to put it out because I don't care. I'm not marrying any of these digital assets. I keep in mind that any of these digital assets at any time could go to zero for any reason at all. And I, I just I don't marry any one single cryptocurrency. This market is too big. The Internet of value is going to be too big to be caught up uh, fantasizing, romanticizing about one particular cryptocurrency that I'm that I'm emotionally invested into. Right. My goal is to have absolutely no emotion when it comes to investing in these markets. With that said, Dan Pena, you guys may remember this guy. If you don't, I'll play you a video clip for him right now. He should bring you up to speed in your memory. But maybe this is your first time seeing him. In that case, have fun. And when that comes out, you heard it here first. Bitcoin is going to zero. Zero. You heard it here first. Bitcoin is going to zero. Zero. When it comes out, zero. Bitcoin is going to zero. All right. Do you guys remember him? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Uh, but now I will play for you another clip of what he, he, he thinks of people who invest in Bitcoin and Bitcoin investors. You know, Bitcoin could be a thousand tomorrow. Just because it's 800, 8,000 today. I mean, just, I don't give a fuck. So don't ask me. When it was at 19,000, I said, sell half, keep half. That's the only thing I said, which is just smart trading. And you didn't do that, so don't ask me now. But a, a, a smart, rich guy I talked to last night, he said, it's like these guys found a $1,000 bill in the street or they found a diamond in the street and the diamond went up in value and now they're investors. They're professional investors all of a sudden because they found a fucking thousand dollar bill in the street. 9.999% of the people that own Bitcoin are fucking morons. Retarded. Imbeciles. That's just it. Some of you in this room fall into that category. You found a thousand dollar bill in the street, just say, well, I found a thousand dollar bill in the street. So don't, don't ask me anymore. Go fuck yourselves, please. Very interesting, right? Now, this tweet, guys, from December 25th, just two days ago. He says, PayPal allows Bitcoin and crypto spending is main reason Bitcoin has gone from 12,000 to 18,000 in the last month. I would have never believed it, but I was wrong. All bets are off. No telling how high it might go. As more institutions adopt similar guidelines, I still don't accept Bitcoin, LOL. So guys, really interesting. So we have the Dan Pena uh, retracting a statement about Bitcoin, admitting he was wrong. At least he is admitting he was wrong and, and you know, is saying that he, he you know, doesn't know how much higher it could go, right? At least he's not going down with the ship, right? We see that a lot of times people also, they get emotional about the statements they make, right? They, they make a prediction and now that prediction has to be true, right? They have to ride it till the day they die. Whereas it's, it's just a much more intelligent thing to do when you can just admit you were wrong and move on, right? Because if, if Bitcoin is, is continuing to go up and you continue to call it a scam, but it is continuously going up and not only is it continuously going up, but you can still see institutions are still investing into it. Um, you see adoption happening of it 
and you just write it all the way to your deathbed, calling it a scam, you would have looked much more intelligent to just admit you were wrong, right? So at least he's admitting that he was wrong. All bets are off. He doesn't know how high it can go. He does. I've heard him say in interviews and stuff like that, or I don't know if it was interviews or talks, but he thinks that Putin created Bitcoin. So that's the reason why he said, oh, it's going to zero. The reason why is he said he, he claims that it's some big Putin conspiracy. Uh, Putin created Bitcoin to collapse the financial markets and you know obtain more wealth, right? Data, whatever it is that, that they do. Interesting stuff that I figured is worth presenting to you. I figured you guys would like to see it. And we'll leave off on this, guys. This is coming from the Wall Street Journal. Investors double down on stocks, pushing margin debt to record. So what I want to know about you guys, uh, what you guys think is, do you think that we are entering, you know, possibly the most euphoric stage of this bull market where people are just getting way too over leveraged? I mean, in this, we're seeing people, uh, this article basically goes over and talks about, and I, I would recommend you guys read. It's actually kind of funny, but people are, are literally taking on margin debt to buy Tesla at the prices it is at now. Now, it may very well play out to be a, a great buy. They make a lot of money. And honestly, I hope they do because I, I don't like seeing you know your normal average person getting wrecked, right? No one likes to see that. I'd rather see big banks get wrecked. I'd rather see you know those type of individuals get wrecked. I don't like to see the average everyday person get wrecked. But it looks like we are we are we have to be getting close to that point um, where this stuff is going to come to some sort of correction, right? Or is the Fed just going to keep printing it? Either way, whatever happens, again, the thing that I always like to say, it's just crystal ball guessing, right? A lot of times you guys ask me, oh, what do you think this project's going to? What do you think this coin price is going to go to? And I usually just try to tell you, you know, like your guess is as good as mine. You know, like I look at the charts, I do my research, I have an idea, but that's all it is. It's it's just an idea, right? There are no um, certainties in investing ever. But what do you guys think? And also, what do you guys think if the stock market was crashing? Do you think we are going to see cryptocurrencies prevail and go up, right? Are they going to uh, do the opposite of the stock market, right? Stock market collapsing, will cryptocurrencies go up? Or do you think that the stock market collapsing would just drag the rest of the market down? Let me know what you think below. With that said, guys, that is the video. So on your way out, make sure you tap the like button. It really does help so much for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys for the support. Also, keep in mind, if you enjoyed this video, then subscribe and hit the bell. You'll be notified every single day when I upload a video like this. We go over Bitcoin, altcoins, and everything going on in the crypto space to try and keep you up to date. Keep in mind, nothing we cover here is financial advice. I'm just documenting this crypto bull run and the daily crypto news. And that is it. Uh, with that said, guys, again, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell. You'll be notified every single time I upload. Hope you guys have a great day. And I'll see you on the next one. Oh, and make sure I upload every video to Theta first. This video is uploaded to Theta first. Sometimes I upload videos days in advance to Theta. So if you want to check me out here and be among the first to see my content, the link is in the, in the description and it's all on Theta.tv. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.